Charleston in the Low Country has its fair share of historic landmarks. This area, let's face it, steeped in history. And one of the most scenic and popular spots, you look at it right there, Shem Creek, right here in Mount Pleasant. Much has changed when it comes to the creek, including its name several times. But there are some working to make sure it's here for generations to come. Well, Shem Creek is, is special to my family. And this is what artist Kevin Harrison sees when painting it. His goal is to trigger memories in others. If it conjures up a, a memory or a feeling in somebody, then, then I've done my job right. Millions of memories made at Shem Creek throughout the years. Its name thought to be derived from the Native American word Shemi. It's recorded history dating back to the 1600s, a lime kiln and distillery on its banks, mills and factories in the 1800s, and then came seafood. When I was a little boy, we used to ski on Shem Creek. Jimmy Bagwell. Born and raised in Charleston and grew up in Mount Pleasant my last 72 years. A former town council member and founder of Save Shem Creek, Bagwell grew up here and saw firsthand how the shipping industry exploded in the 1960s and 70s. There were so many shrimp boats on Shem Creek. They were tied up three abreast on both sides of the creek. There was probably 50 or 60 boats in there at any one time. And it was just an, an amazing hub for the commercial fishing industry. Taylor Tarvin and his wife Cindy owned Tarvin Seafood on Shem Creek, one of the last remaining shrimpers here. 30 years ago on this creek, there were 70 shrimp boats. And they would go out every day, catch shrimp, come in, offload them to the five fish houses that were located on this creek, and then go out and do the same thing the next day. Well, that, that model has all changed. Changed in the 80s as restaurants became an important part of the business model and business is good. A recent economic impact study says Shem Creek brings about $100 million into the local economy each year. But not everyone is happy where this creek is headed. The amount of uneducation on this creek and the amount of uh, ignorance on this creek baffles me these days. Jamie Huff, captain, Redfish Mafia, has been fishing these waters for 25 years. He sees boaters, kayakers, and others not respecting the area. Issues with littering, water quality, and disturbing native wildlife nearby. There's a, there's a ton going on with the creek that is going to happen anytime you overpopulate an area. But what becomes the Shem Creek is what concerns Huff and Bagwell the most. Among the bigger issues besides growth and development is Crab Bank at the mouth of the creek. The Corps of Engineers wants to drop 660,000 cubic yards of dredge material on the north end of what is left of Crab Bank. We're concerned that that will help the uh, migration of sand and silt toward uh, uh, Patriots Point, number one. That is filling in dramatically. It's so shallow out there at low tide now, Brendan, it's hard to believe. Huff would like to see jetty rocks on the east end of Crab Bank to keep the channels deep enough for water traffic. He fears without long-term planning, the creek we see now will be changed forever. It's more important for people to understand they have to coexist with the creek as opposed to coexisting with each other. We have, we have to take care of the creek and let the creek do her thing, and then we, we have to manage what we're doing around that. So as we look at what Shem Creek is now in this snapshot in time, we wonder what it will look like for future generations. Who knows what it's going to look like in 40 or 50 years. Hopefully, it'll look similar. Now, Bagwell and Save Shem Creek fought against having that parking garage built there. They say although the creek has become more of a tourist center now, the shrimping industry, restaurants, and other businesses can coexist and preserve it for people who want to visit.